Hey, what's up everyone? Jason Turley here, back with another video. Uh, I was doom scrolling on Reddit the other day and I saw this post titled, Is Binary Exploitation Prevalent in Today's Context? So I did respond to this a few days ago on Reddit, but I did kind of want to address it and make like a formal dedicated YouTube video towards it. And maybe uh, you guys can chime in as well. I'm curious to know what your guys' thoughts and opinions are on this matter. So the Reddit user, newbie0123, they ask, hey, they say, I'll have planned to learn binary exploitation and familiarize with it, but then with increasing usage of Rust, is it worth it? Or should I dive into reverse engineering? So they're basically asking, is it still worth it to learn um, binary exploitation today in 2024 when programming languages like Rust and Go that are memory safe. They do have uh, bounds checking and other uh, built-in mitigations and whatnot that languages like C or C++ do not have. For example, um, if you do a buffer overflow in C, that could lead to uh, remote code execution or some type of injection of shell code and whatnot in languages like rust and go that where they do check the buffer they do check um if you're writing too much data it won't actually get leaked onto the stack so those are more memory safe languages for example so they're asking that hey is it still worth it to learn binary exploitation or should i throw in the towel completely kick the can and just do reverse engineering instead and quick point uh, binary exploitation and reverse engineering go hand in hand you can do reverse engineering without having to exploit any binaries or anything like that. But if you want to get competent at binary exploitation, you are going to need reverse engineering skills. They're not uh, mutually exclusive in that sense, right? So if you're doing binary exploitation and all that means, for example, you have um, a compiled binary, whether that's C, Rust, C++, doesn't matter. You have the final product, you have the final application, but you don't have the source code and you want to figure out what's going on and how it works. So you open up that program in a disassembler or a debugger, IDA, Ghidra, GDB, WinDebug, OliDebug, what have you. And you just step through and you look at the assembly instructions and you make sense of what's going on and you see where you can find any bugs or programming flaws that maybe you can exploit. So you can't really do binary exploitation without having some type of reverse engineering aptitude or skills. And you could argue, well, Jason, what if the program is open source, meaning the source code is freely online in a place like GitHub, for example, I won't need reverse engineering in that sense, right? Or the Linux kernel, the Linux kernel is open source so I don't need reverse engineering um, skills to be able to do that, right? Yeah, maybe, but I would argue it would still be good to have reverse engineering, you know, aptitude and skills, because even if something is open sourced, uh, just because you write the code to do one thing, it doesn't mean that that's actually what it's doing, because compilers do like to optimize uh, assembly instructions. So if you write a function that does one thing, uh, maybe it completely gets optimized away or edited or changed for the actual assembly. So if you're able to debug and look at assembly code, um, that's, you know, that's literally the instructions that are being passed to the CPU. So I think, I don't know, I'm kind of just rambling at this point but yeah having debugging and reverse engineering skills you kind of need them to do binary exploitation but with all that you know preamble rambling out of the way let's actually answer this guy's question so is binary exploitation still worth it today uh, you know i wrote like a you know couple of little paragraphs in, in my response here but to summarize it i would say it really depends what your goals are if you're just learning binary exploitation because you think it's fun and it's cool and um, you do capture the flag challenges, uh, I think it's worth it, right? Because learning binary exploitation or just learning different computer concepts, computer science, computer security concepts in general, I think is advantageous and that will carry over in any uh, discipline, any concentration of IT or cybersecurity you do. I firmly believe that knowledge is power, and the more you know, the better equipped you'll be to solve 
uh, different problems in computer security and computer science. And learning about binary exploitation, it will teach you about how computers work at a very low level. It really doesn't get a whole lot lower than opening up a program in GDB and looking at assembly. The only thing lower than that, I guess, would be um, hardware, right? Doing actual hardware hacking and whatnot, hardware hacking. But yeah, so if you can understand different assembly instructions and op codes, you know, you don't need to be a master at it. But just having like a basic idea of what's going on, what a base pointer is, what a stack pointer is, um, it, at least for me, like I didn't understand how pointers worked in languages like C or C++. It was kind of uh, very confusing until I learned assembly. All right, I took a computer architecture class in college and university, and we were doing MIPS assembly, and in assembly. I guess pointers kind of exist, but more so you're just literally dereferencing or writing to a memory address. Um, yeah, that just kind of taught me what pointers were. So I think learning binary exploitation, reverse engineering, assembly, I think it's just going to make you a stronger computer security and computer science professional overall. But if you do want to consider this as an actual career field, is it worth it? Yes, because even though Rust and Golang exist, they're not widely used and they're not widely, um, and I don't think they will be widely used for a long time. Maybe new projects will be written in Go. Um, you know, the, the blog I use or the static site generator that I use uh, for my blog is Hugo and that's written completely in Golang. So I think new projects will be written in Go and Rust, but what about old projects? So we mentioned the Linux kernel earlier. The Linux kernel is mainly C. And if you look at Windows operating system, that's C and C++, so essentially the same thing really. So there's lots of legacy code, there's lots of um, embedded devices that are going to be running C and C++ and they'll be continuing to run C and C++ uh, for the foreseeable future. So if you want to find operating system bugs and memory corruption and binary exploitation, those are your good candidates. Uh, things like web browsers are written in C++ especially. So just because Rust and Go exist, maybe new projects will be written in those. But a lot of things that have been around for 10, 15, 20 plus years are still going to have C and C++. <clears throat> and then I guess another quick note on embedded devices and IoT devices. Those are written in C and they don't always have a lot of those um, mitigations installed. So if you do a like hard uh, Pico CTF binary exploitation challenge, you might be given a binary that was compiled in C, but it has computer mitigations, it has security mitigations in place, like the NX bit, so you can't actually execute shellcode on the stack, or they have address space um, layout randomization enabled. So they have all these different mitigations enabled that just make your job as a um, attacker, as a binary exploiter, a little bit harder. Those things don't really exist in IoT and smart devices. So if you look at like smart fridges or cameras and things like that, uh, routers that are written in C, they don't have those security mitigations in place. Security is more of an afterthought for those kind of things, which is a whole different uh, topic in itself. Um, so I think that was my main point. I do have this article, not this article, um, this website, Zerodium, pulled up. And they, they're they basically bounties and whatnot for these low-level memory corruption, binary exploitation vulnerabilities. So you can see all the different eligible, you know, tasks, not tasks, all the eligible um, I guess categories, the products, operating systems, web browsers, smartphones, especially. And if we scroll down here, if we look at the payouts, let me make sure this is a uh, big enough for everyone to see. And let me, let me move this around. So my ugly face is not in the way. Okay. So if we look at these different, uh, Zerodium payouts for desktops and servers, we do see that they are paying up to a million bucks for different things like 
uh, Windows remote code execution, zero click, meaning there's no user interaction whatsoever, and you can exploit a Windows target that lives out on the internet. You see different things for um, Apache and Chrome and all this other stuff. So these bugs, these payouts are pretty huge. Right, we see up to 100,000, up to 200,000. And these are all low level remote code execution and whatnot. So I can't speak to like who exactly you're selling these to, like um, if they're gonna do anything ethical with it or not. But there is a lot of money involved in these type of positions. Or if you just want like a you know career, there are careers like vulnerability researcher and security researcher and reverse engineer that do need these binary exploitation kind of skills. So I think that's really all I have to say on that matter. I'd be very curious to know what you guys have to say in the comments down below. Is it still worth it learning binary exploitation in 2024 with all these different hardware and software mitigations in place that make it a lot more difficult? Um, I will link to this video in this Reddit discussion. So any comments you make, uh, you know, this user Hopefully they'll look at the video and, you know, be informed and, you know, see all your insights and whatnot. And that's really all, all I have to say. If you notice, uh, my arm is in a brace. It is not fully operational. So I haven't really been making any uh, walkthroughs because of the arm. So this is what happens when you do click on phishing links. You know, I got got. Yeah, so that's really all I have to say in that matter. As always, guys, take it easy and see you in the next video. Thank you.